Good morning, church. I want to welcome and bless all of you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Redeemer, and reasons to pray on a beautiful Sunday morning. What a wonderful it is through the power of the Holy Spirit to greet each other, especially people who haven't seen for a while. It's welcome back. And also, and the brother and sister, and I feel watching is YouTube and Facebook. So I would like to welcome all of you to the worship at Union Center United Methodist Church. So I do hope and pray during this time, this divine spirit will dwell in your heart and mind so that we'll be able to you know, feel the presence of our God during our worship service. Let's have a time to pray with me. God of our all creation, it is our joy and our honor to come together to worship you today. Open our hearts and minds to your presence. Move us and shake us, forget and challenge us, and forgive us, and strange us, and guide us. Help us to understand that you are waste and walk in them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, upon the mountain you revealed our Messiah, who by his death and resurrection would fulfill both the law and the prophets. By his transfiguration, enlighten our path that we may dare to suffer with him in the service of humanity and so share in the everlasting glory of him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen.
And while we're all standing together, let's say together our Apostles' Creed. For this is what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty. Our New Testament reading um, this week is from the book of Mark, the ninth chapter, verses 2 through 13. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them high up on a mountain where they were all alone. There he transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking to Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They kept the matter to themselves, discussing what rising from the dead meant. And they asked him, why do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? And Jesus replied, to be sure, Elijah does come first and restores all things. Why then is it written that the Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected? But I tell you, Elijah has come, and they have done to him everything they wish, just as it is written about him. Amen. Let's enjoy Eric's music today.
Thank you, Eric. This is the time where we get to come together and share our joys, our concerns, any blessings that we've had during the week, um, and of course, uh, prayer requests. It's good to be back from Georgia. Uh, my sister Vicki and I would like to thank the church, the church family, Pastor Jay, and everybody for their thoughts, prayers, and concerns for our brother Bob. Uh, he's been turned over to palliative care. He has been made comfortable. We're all still a little bit in shock, but we thank you all for your prayers. Just know that your church family is here for you. Who's next? Who'd like to go next? Oh, come on. I'll have to call on you. Dave? <laughs> Good morning. Yeah, Robbie was here this morning, but she went back home. She's not feeling too well yet, so pray that she learned some prayer for her. We need to keep Sue Lee in our prayers. She did get into rehab at Ideal. She's in still a bit of pain, waiting for the swelling in her knee to go down and getting some therapy. And also our sister Emily had to go to the walk-in this morning with some pain, so keep her in your prayers. Anyone else? Quite a, um extensive prayer list on the back. Um, I know that uh, several families are suffering with COVID. The Woodwards are out. They have had or are suffering from COVID now. Um, Rodney saw Tom Eckhorst, and he had COVID for four weeks. That's why we haven't seen him. And was even in the hospital for it. So let's keep the Eckhorst family and the Woodwards in our prayers. Um, Anything else that we might have prayer requests for? This Wednesday is um, Ash Wednesday. We will be having a combined service with the Wesley Church at 6 o'clock here. So we invite you all. Um, anything else, I guess, we're kind of slow on? Patricia. I, you know, the, no news is good news, but um, I was watching the TV the other night, and of all things, you know how the schools will have, let the organizations have meetings in their school building? Homer Elementary School is having a satanic temple have meetings in their, in their school. I'm just shaking my head, you know, like what else? I would like to say that yesterday, traveling from Atlanta back home here, we had sun all the way, dry roads, traffic was good. I mean, the Lord was present all the way. I wore sunglasses all the way. So, but I wanted, and we were able to uh, knock an hour off our normal time because we had our daughter come back with us, and she was leading the way. And trying to keep up with her, we actually scratched an hour <laughs> off our normal time. So. so thank you all for, it's good to be back. Amy, Amy, do you have, Amy, do you have a rebuttal? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and she caught up with you? <laughs> Just a reminder for your prayers, we'll have two separate people having surgeries this week. Nancy Carpenter will be having surgery, I believe, in Syracuse. 
and um, on her, um, she has a heart condition and a pacemaker and such, and she's having that um, repaired. Rodney will be having surgery Tuesday on his back. Um, I really ask for prayers for him and I that um, he comes through this well and my patience stays nice and healthy. <laughs> Anything else? You know I love him. <laughs> Anything else? Let's bow our heads in silent prayer and I'll pray. And then we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. Oh, Father God, how good it is to be in your house this morning. Oh we can come together and we can sing praises to you. We can lift up our hands in, in worship, Father, that you've given us a beautiful, beautiful place to come, that you've sent a loving pastor and family to us, Father, a pastor that preaches from the Bible, Father, and that's what we, we all need. We thank you, Father, for all the blessings that you've given us this week. I thank you, Father, that as the youngs were coming uh, up the highway in the sunshine, Father, you were with them, and you guided them, and you protected them. I know that we can, we can joke and, about traveling and, and timetables, Father, but I know that you were with them every step of the way, and that you were guiding them and protecting them. Father, we're, we're praying for the young family this morning as... Our brother Bob is, is winding down, Father, and he's resting and just waiting his turn till he becomes able to come up to you and, and to be at your feet, Father. We ask that you bless and guide and protect the family as this waiting is the hardest and then as they go through the grieving process, Father. But know that Bob will be happy and whole and, and healthy once again. And for that, we all look forward to. We're thinking of Emily this morning and who had to go to the walk-in father with some pain issues that she's having. We ask that you be with her and, and the family as uh, she goes through and gets this resolved, Father. We're praying for those, Father, that are suffering with COVID or recovering from, Father. I ask that you be with everyone as, as they go through this terrible debate. Father, we're thinking of Sue Lee this morning as she's uh, recuperating and getting her strength back, Father, that soon she will be pain-free and able to um, be with us back in church and singing in the choir and just resuming her, her daily activities. And Father, we're, we're asking for a special blessing on those that are receiving surgeries this week, Nancy and Rodney. I ask that you be with the doctors and the nurses and all the technicians and anyone involved in, in these surgeries, Father, be with them. Father, we're so thankful for um, the opportunity that you gave us that we can have um, pantries, indoor and outdoor pantries, Father, that we can serve our community and that they can come to us and we can at least give them a smile and and help them along, even if it's just for a short time, Father. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for blessing us, because those that are have been working at it have truly been blessed. So, Father, we thank you again for the weather that you give us, even though sometimes it's not sun sunny here. We know that you are the sunshine and that you're in our heart, Father. And as we're praying, would you please pray with me the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will you please stand with me as we have our 
Next hymn, My Hope is in the Lord. You all be seated. And the scripture this morning is taken from Psalm chapter 20, 121, verse 1 through 6. I read for you. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I will not let you foot, foot, the foot slave, and he who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel is will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm, but harm you by day, nor the moon by night. Amen. Let us pray. As may the word of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Now sometimes a word or a sentence has ability to move people's hearts more than anything. The following phrases represent companies by showing who they are in a short sentence and simple word. The world's largest bookstore, a bookstore too big for the physical world, is certainly a slogan fit for the world's largest online service, the shopping service, Amazon. The best or nothing. Fans, the ultimate driving machine. Hmm, 
This slogan are clearly showing that the company's aim and at the world best in the automobile industry. What about this? Be the first to know. Would you like to take a guess what slogans for? Be the best to know. It's for CNN. As CNN's slogan says, they were the first TV channel to report on the 911 crisis. One word or simple sentence seems to be enough to let them and to the world and its people know who they are and what they do. We sometimes really don't need long and a lot of words to touch our heart. Rather, one word or short sentence might be a far more effective way than a long one, right? So it is an ability that treat it as impossible and important as life and death in the commercial world. Because not only this can save time and money, but it can also dramatically increase on the effectiveness of advertising. Here's one example of this. And there's your beautiful baby. Any day now. Really? You're eating Doritos? He's eating Doritos on my ultrasound. Do you see what I have to do? I know. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Give me that. The biggest sport event in this world and in this U.S. is, of course, the Super Bowl. It's kind of like a battle, isn't it? As intense as the actual game is, there's another intense battle going on during the same time. But it is happening out of the stadium. It's between the advertising. This is another fun thing to look out for during the Super Bowl, right? The famous companies around the world are pouring out huge advertising costs for commercial placement during the sports event. According to by some estimate, $200,000 are spent per second. Oh. But the problem is time. Everything depends on how effectively the people's mind can be moved in that short month of time. That's why it's so important to have an advertising strategy powerful and impactful enough to express the product in one word or a phrase. Being able to express the attribute of something or someone in one reliable word or phrases, the phrases is a great ability. And that ability is made possible through experience and long observations. There are countless number of you know, comprehensions about God in the Bible. Someone described God as love, Another person describes him as the creator and the savior. They also confess that he is the life and the rock. Sometimes they confess to him as a friend and a healer. Last week, is we had a fellowship after the, you know, this worship service. And as we joined the fellowship, I was able to hear that they described God. For them, God was sometimes a conqueror, almighty, and healer. The name of God confessed by them had related to their experience and companionship with God. 
And above all, I realized that there is a far more miracle child of God than is without from the testimony on the table. Because God has been confessed from their experience, not their word told from someone. The story it was powerful and touched our heart enough, despite their different description of God. Therefore, this and many confessions about God are their sincere confessions after experiencing and realizing through long companionship with God. It's not just a rhetoric or a lip service. Above all, within these kinds of confessions, our faith and belief in God becomes stronger and more powerful. Let's take a look at Job's confession. You said, and listen now, and I will speak, I will question you, and you shall answer me. My ear had heard of you, but now my ears have seen you. Job chapter 42, verse 4 through 5. In a short sentence, but it is a confession that fully depicts to us what God is like. Only after going through his journey and experiences is you able to confess that God is righteous and almighty. Then, what is your confession to God? What is your confession to God? If you are hard to confess who God is to you, well, it might be either that you haven't experienced God or have no idea. In that sense, I think today's scripture is able to guide us to experience and confess this God. In other words, it's the, it's the passage that gives us the fundamental answer to how the people of God could experience God and make such confessions. The answer, the answer is nothing other than a confession that God is like a mountain. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Amen? There are many confessions and so many descriptions of God in the scripture, though I think this is the top of the top of all among them. Because it can never be confessed unless people know God wholeheartedly. I have an, I have an, I have a one friend from Nepal. It's what's the first and a thing and that comes to your mind is when you think about is when you heard the Nepal. But for me, it's the Himalaya mountains. It's a place filled with some of the tallest mountains in the world. It's a place that being filled with some of the largest and greatest mountains in the world that you wouldn't believe it until you see it yourself. Have you ever experienced and visited there, Himalaya? No. It's my bucket list. As my Nepalese friend is a confession that he made when he believed in God was very memorable. He said, he grew up and looking at the highest peak of the mountains like Everest and K2, that are the first and second largest mountain in the world. Everest, K2. He said, he was left in awe of such a majestic spectrum of greatness. One day, as he was reading the Bible given by a missionary, he saw the passage that compared God to the mountains. He was very touched by it because it was an image that he could completely relate to. And he confessed he came to believe in the Lord and became a missionary. There are various experiences 
and expressions of God, but today's poet confessed that he's always like a stabby mountains. So it is able to confess that he can and trust God to be his help under any circumstances. You and I probably know and as well now of Abraham's story. Undoubtedly, he was a person of faith. The book of Hebrew describes his faith like the following. By faith, Abraham is when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obedience, obeyed, and went even though he didn't know where he is going. But for him, his journey to the mountain to sacrifice to his son Isaac would have been more difficult and incomprehensible than as we can imagine, right? But he didn't waver. He faithfully kept on to the promise of the world that God is like the mountains and strengthened his faith in God. And he got up there and a look up, he saw what God had prepared for him. What is the source of Abraham's faith? It's based on the faith and not only to believe in God, who is like a mountain never to shake, but also God firmly hold him in every moment and step. Long time ago, early in the morning, on the last day of a retreat, it had been so foggy that I couldn't see anything outside the windows. As I was about to head home without a clean answer to difficult personal and a church situation, the fog outside felt like the state of my heart. However, after taking a shower and packing my, thing, packing my things, look outside and lift my eyes to see huge mountains Underneath the sun, that cleaned the fog away. During the past couple of days, I had forgotten that the mountains were there, but they were still there. At the moment, all of a sudden, I remembered today's word and started to learn them by heart. And I confessed the following confess. The mountain created by the Lord was always there in that same spot. But I haven't seen able to see it because of the fog covering it. Like that, the Lord is always with me like the mountain that's always been there. But because of my heart covered, with, covered in fog, I hadn't thought that the Lord was not present and not helping me. Today, the confession that Lord is like the mountains includes great encouragement and consolation of faith than is without. At times, it may feel like we don't have any answers to our prayers or that God is not there. Other times, we think, why me? During times like this, when we feel the trail and hardship of our life, today's confession tells us to lift our eyes to the Lord who is always there. Our Lord, who is like the mountains, is always standing there next to us in every moment, even when the mountain may be temporarily covered with fog. So I have the hopes that once in a while I'd like to ask all of you, what is expressions, is what is to describe God in your life and in your faithful journey? So I have the hopes God is a mountain. What does it truly mean? God always is be there even though we are in sorrow, and difficult times we are going through, God always there. So if we turn our heart and our eyes to the God, we'll be able to meet God's like a mountain. So I have the hopes 
this mount, like mountain God always be with you forevermore. Amen. So now as we go to the, our final hymn together. Please stand if you are able as we sing together. How can we name a love? Hear the benediction. And when my faith begins to tremble and shake, I come to be for the Lord my God, because the like a mountain is the Lord. Unmoving eternally, he stands. I will lift up my eyes and see his faithful love for me. The Lord God is my help and my strength. The Lord's plans are eternally true. Before his majesty, I submit in faithful trust and worship his name. The Lord leads me wherever we go. Never will leave us, always walk with us, and his steadfast love. And now, go in God's peace and his power forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you.